From the Tribune News Network, this is Newsbreak. I'm Krishna Russell. Prime Minister Dr. Hubert Minnis has accepted the resignation of Seabreeze MP Lanisha Roll from her post as Minister of Youth, Sports and Culture. An official press release from Cabinet Office said certain matters were brought to the Prime Minister's attention that will be investigated. Dr. Minnis further thanked the MP for her service. The official release from Cabinet came after what appeared to be a resignation letter from Mrs. Roll addressed to Governor General C.A. Smith went viral on social media. Pick up a copy of tomorrow's Tribune for more on this developing story. Progressive Liberal Party leader Philip Brave Davis said he is willing to participate in a nationally televised debate with Prime Minister Dr. Hubert Minnis. Dr. Minnis, however, did not reply when asked moments earlier if he would debate Mr. Davis. The man had just finished attending an event yesterday marking the opening of the new MacFit 360 facility in Cable Beach when reporters surrounded them. I've said before that I am willing to debate, Mr. Davis said. If he wants to, I am here. I was asked before whether I would be prepared to debate the Prime Minister on on a national stage. I said yes, and I am, and I asked you to ask him whether he's prepared to do so. Mr. Davis, who hosted a press conference at the PLP's headquarters last week, has contrasted his accessibility to the media with that of Dr. Minnis. Mr. Davis has also criticized Dr. Minnis's weekend national address. While public schools in Abaco, Eleuthera, Exuma, and New Providence will welcome students back to the classroom for in-person learning today under a hybrid model, not every campus will be ready to accommodate pupils. At a press conference yesterday, Ministry of Education officials explained how the hybrid model will work, allowing students to attend school on a reduced schedule while they're still expected to engage in learning activities when not on campus. It has been mandated that not more than 50% of the student population is at school at any time to limit the number of people in one physical space. While the exact number of schools unable to open today was not revealed, a few area superintendents listed a number of institutions and when they would be open. Construction work was one of the main reasons given, among others, while all schools on the aforementioned islands will not reopen for face-to-face -face learning today. A man is dead and another in hospital after a double shooting last night on John Road off of Hospital Lane. Assistant Superintendent Audley Peters said shortly before 7 p.m., responding officers met a man lying on the ground with apparent gunshot wounds to the chest. A distance away, officers found the body of another male with gunshot wounds to the head. That victim was assisted to the hospital via an EMS unit, and it is our understanding at this moment that that victim has succumbed to his injuries. The victim, who was shot to the chest, was taken to hospital by a private vehicle. However, his condition was not known up to press time. ASP Peters said the men were pursued by their shooters. One body was found on a pathway and another was found on a verge of the street. He said police were following leads and a man was in custody assisting with that investigation. Your complete news and information source, this is the Tribune News Network. In international news, Testifying for the first time about the insurrection at the U.S. Capitol, former security officials blamed faulty intelligence for the disastrous failure to anticipate the violent intentions of the mob that invaded the building and interrupted the certification of the presidential election. The officials, including the former chief of Capitol Police, are blaming other federal agencies and each other for their failure to defend the building as supporters of then-President Donald Trump overwhelmed security barriers, breaking windows and doors, and sending law makers fleeing from the House and Senate chambers. They say they expected the protest to be similar to two pro-Trump events in late 2020 that were far less violent. The top developers of U.S. COVID-19 vaccines are facing questions from Congress about limited supplies of the shots needed to end the pandemic. The pace of vaccinations is picking up worldwide, but demand for the shots continues to outpace limited supplies distributed by the U.S. government. The Energy and Commerce Committee panel began hearing testimony from the five companies with contracts to supply COVID-19 shots to the U.S. Pfizer, Moderna, Johnson & Johnson, AstraZeneca, and Novavax. Johnson & Johnson revealed ahead of the hearing that initial supplies of its one-shot vaccine will be limited to 20 million doses by the end of March. The company plans to tell lawmakers it faces significant challenges in scaling up production. The Tribune's AccuWeather update, a service of Bahamas Power and Light Company. A weak cold front will gradually sag southward across the extreme northwest Bahamas, sparking pockets of unsettled weather over portions of the northwest Bahamas through tonight. Beachgoers should exercise caution due to the risk of hazardous rip currents along Atlantic exposed shorelines. In the northwest Bahamas, it'll be variably cloudy, a bit breezy and warm, with widely scattered showers and the chance of a few isolated thunderstorms, mainly in the vicinity of the frontal boundary. 
boundary. Partly sunny elsewhere. A small craft caution is in effect. Winds southerly at 15 to 20 knots, becoming west southwest to west northwest at 10 to 15 knots by this afternoon in the extreme northwest Bahamas. Southerly at 10 to 50 knots over the remainder of the area. But shifting northerly at 10 to 50 knots over the entire northwest Bahamas by this evening. Seas 4 to 6 feet over the ocean, decreasing 3 to 5 feet in swells by this afternoon. In the central and southeast Bahamas, it'll be partly to mostly sunny, breezy, and very warm, with few light passing showers possible, becoming mostly fair and mild tonight. A small craft caution remains in effect. Winds east to southeast at 15 to 20 knots, decreasing 10 to 15 knots by late afternoon. Seas 4 to 7 feet over the ocean. We'll have a daytime high temperature of 84 degrees and an overnight low temperature of 72. The sun will set this afternoon at 6.07 and will rise tomorrow morning at 6.38. That's Newsbreak. Details of the day's top stories in the Tribune newspaper. Now on the streets or stay up to date online at Tribune242.com.